Hey, Iostax here. Today I want to comment on the situation recently that hit the front page of our competitive Overwatch, and that is the situation with the Chengdu Hunters and the rumors of their players uh, burning out. Now, the tweet is uh, over here, so I'm going to read that real quick. So on the 1st of August, the Chengdu Hunters tweeted, Recently heard rumors about Hunters retiring. They were stressed out due to stage 3 performance and high-pressure training but they got energized again. Owl Season 3 will take us back to our home city with more food and exploration awaiting. Now, I don't want to go too much into the tweet itself. I rather want to go into some of the community responses regarding the tweet. My thoughts personally on the tweet is that I'm not quite sure what the actual point behind the tweet was, because all it does is it gives those rumors validity, right? Because if the season starts and none of the players actually end up retiring, then that just discredits, you know, the rumors themselves and the situation just blows over, right? So I'm not really sure what they have to gain um, out of making a tweet like that. If they made this tweet to promote that next season is going to have all of the teams localized, I feel like mentioning the rumors wasn't really necessary either. Now I do quickly want to go into some of the community responses. Now, you know, keep in mind, um, these are some of the worst Reddit comments really in the thread, and I think most of the people understand that these comments aren't really that great. Um, but just for those of you who don't know why these comments are bad, I still want to quickly go over them comments and kind of make some, um, you know, notes regarding them. So the first comment uh, reads as follows. Translation, we just slept them with a giant bonus in their contracts for next year, and now they're okay with staying. And now, to be perfectly clear, I can understand where this sentiment is actually coming from, but it doesn't actually make that much sense. But I do want to explain why doing this, um, you know, isn't really in the organization's best interest, and which is also, you know, why this probably, you know, didn't actually happen the way that this person thinks it happens. So whenever you have an organization and you have players, you always need to make sure that the relationship between the organization and the players is appropriate. Right. And if the organization went out and, you know, gave the players a bonus or up their salary or anything of the sort to prevent them from retiring, then the organization is essentially telling the players, hey, we can't do without you. We can't have you retire. Um, we're going to give you more money so you don't retire. But that's very problematic because this puts the players into a position where A, their ego can rise to levels that cannot be controlled by the head coach anymore because they think, hey, I'm a repl uh, replaceable with this team, really, really needs me, they can't do without me. And it also gives the players the possibility to potentially even extort the org, right, where they can go, well, you know, if you double that bonus, I might think about not retiring, and they can take that bonus and then they can just go away and not hold on to their promise. Right. So clearly the org um, would create a very toxic and uh, one-sided relationship with their players by offering them bonuses to prevent them from retiring. Now the next comment uh, reads as follows. That's the biggest PR bullshit I've seen of them. Of course they didn't brush that off in only a week of time. Honestly, if anything, the pressure will be raising for them a lot in stage 4 because of the play and qualifications implications. Now one important thing to understand, and this is something that a lot of people on Reddit tend to kind of not really get, we had a similar situation with Crystal, is that young players lack life experience. They're really just that, they're essentially teenagers, most of them, like yes, there's the minimum age required of, of, of 18, but most of these people, uh, most of these players, they come straight out of school, they have no real work experience, they don't really know how adult life works, and they're being put into this very high stress situation. Right? And it's not really that unreasonable to expect that one day they're sitting down, um, they're kind of thinking back on it, on how stressful the last stage have been, and they're toying around the idea of, you know, with the idea of potentially retiring. But that thought is a little bit premature, and people who lack that life experience are more likely to share and act on those premature thoughts without really thinking them through. However, once a person, you know, like their coach, for example, comes around and tells them, hey, you don't actually have to worry too much about it. Next season, we're going to be in our, in, our, uh, in our own country. You can have your own food. You know, all of these issues that you have right now aren't really going to be there anymore, right? Obviously, if you want to retire, we can't stop you from retiring, but I would think about it twice because, you know, realistically speaking, it's, not, it's only going to get better from here on out, then yeah, of course, that can change a player's perspective in, uh, in, in one week. And a lot of players especially are very impressionable as well, right? So if the adult coach comes around and he says, hey, don't worry about it, I know how you're feeling, I know this is pretty rough right now, but next season it's going to be a lot easier, then of course, you know, the players can change their, th uh, their, 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 their thoughts, that's completely normal. And again, as with the comment that I made earlier, I don't really think this is a PR move either, because what does the org have to gain out of making a tweet like this? Except giving those rumors extra validity, which doesn't really mean anything because, 
rumors like this where players are thinking about retiring, they're relatively easy to disprove by just not having the players retire next season. And from my experience in esports, whenever a situation like this happens with these kinds of rumors, rumors generally die down rather quickly as long as you don't address them, especially kind of irrelevant rumors like this without too much details, right? They didn't really go into, um, you know, talking how the organization was bad or how the Overwatch League was bad or anything. So there wasn't really a lot of drama involved and they probably could have just let it slide. So I'm not really sure what the PR benefits of making a tweet like this are. Now, the last comment is as follows. Season three is going to be a make it or break it for the Overwatch League. They've been struggling with the viewership lately, so it's definitely not a good look to investors if players start talking of jumping ship too. I wouldn't be surprised if Blizzard did a little incentivizing to change the players' minds. The PR feeling here is palpable. Now, I can't really comment too much on the viewership figures because I'm not really familiar with the statistics. Um, what I can agree with is that the next season of the Overwatch League overall is going to be very important because this whole localized effort is something that hasn't really been done properly in esports before. It's more of a traditional sports thing. So I'm very interested to see how that pans out. And I think that if this pans out properly, if, you know, Blizzard does a good job doing it, and I sure hope that they do so, then this is going to really be a very, very big, almost revolutionary change for esports as a whole. Um, also looking at other esports leagues like the Call of Duty one or even the, you know, the Riot Games League of Legends series, right? However, what I do disagree with is your comment on investors and how they're going to interpret these news. Um, investors aren't going to base their opinion of an entire operation like the Overwatch League off of rumors about players on a specific team. Because if a investor sees these news, obviously that's not great. You don't want to have these news around your league, right? But there's a big difference between multiple players from multiple teams all across the league saying that they want to retire next season because this is too stressful, this isn't working out to them, um, compared to you know a few players on one single team saying that they want to retire. Because the first assumption in that situation isn't, oh, the league is failing, because clearly it's not failing the players on all of these other teams. In that case, it would only fail the players from this team. So the initial assumption wouldn't be the Overwatch League is failing the players, the initial assumption would be that the Chengdu Hunters are, are, you know, failing the players, right? Because why else would only Chengdu Hunter players think about retiring? But that isn't really the case either, because according to the rumors, the reason that they want to retire is not because the organization was bad. The reason they wanted to retire is just because they were missing home and they weren't really getting used to American culture as well, which again are issues that are going to be solved next week. So there is no real incentive for Blizzard to keep these players from retiring because they would think that it's going to scare up investors. Also, for the reasons that I mentioned in the first comment, it's not actually in Blizzard's best interest to really interfere with player and org relations like this. Because if they would go and incentivize the players to stay monetary, they're, for one, interfering with that relationship and they're causing issues for the organization themselves because in the end, again, it just feeds the player's ego and it makes that entire relationship dependent on Blizzard. So the idea that Chengdu is paying its players to stay and not retire, that's already insane, to be honest. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. But the idea that Blizzard is actually paying the players to not retire is ludicrous. All right, so these are my thoughts on the Chengdu Hunter situation. Um, again, I think that most of the Reddit comments made a lot of sense. It's just very clear that some of the people on it don't really have the necessary experience in, in esports or these kinds of industries in general to really fully understand what's going on, how the dynamics between organizations and players work. And they also tend to always side with the players over the organizations because they have this mantra of, ooh, I don't want to side with the corporations, um, which again, I don't think makes a lot of sense personally, um, but I hope that some of my comments could at least clear up the situation, how all of this works, and that this entire situation around the Chengdu Hunters and the players retiring really isn't as big of a deal as some people think it is. Alright, that is it. My name is Aostax and I'd like to thank you for learning.